my name is Laura Cardi. I'm MFA's Exhibitions Manager, and I'll be your moderator for tonight's We'll Talk with Artists. Our digital discussion tonight is with Paint Annapolis juried artist, Richie Vios. Richie grew up in the Philippines with an artistic family and studied architecture. After his family moved to the States, he got an opportunity to study as an architectural designer. Years later, Richie then traveled back to the Philippines to share his newfound knowledge, but to also study watercolor painting for the next few years. Once he returned to the States to be with his family in Texas, he began to chase the American dream as a watercolor impressionist and plein air artist. He is currently based in Texas, but frequently travels to take part in plein air events and host watercolor workshops. Additionally, I'd like to introduce the host of our show, Will Scott. Will is an art historian with an extensive career as a photographer and the former head of adult programs in the National Gallery of Art. He's uniquely, uniquely, he's uniquely qualified to bridge the gap between artists and the public. Thank you for the introduction, Laura, and thank you, Richie, for agreeing to uh, sit down with me uh, tonight and talk a little bit about your art. I think I mentioned when I spoke to you on the phone the other day that uh, we are inviting uh, some of the juried artists uh, who are going to participate soon in Paint Annapolis uh, to sit for an interview so that our audience, uh, our membership, et cetera, can learn a little bit more about you before seeing you at work around the streets of Annapolis. Let me start in a way that uh, our viewers and listeners really won't be so accustomed to. Usually we start with a little of the artist's background, you know, biography and that sort of thing. But I found your images so interesting to me uh, in a number of ways that I want to jump right into them. And in fact, I want to jump in with something something that based on the introduction might be a little surprising to uh, some of the, the viewers. And that is a very dramatic image of uh, horseback riders in a canyon. Uh, as they can see, it's called canyoneering. And you live principally in Texas, right? Yes, sir. Yes, Will. Yeah. Okay. Victoria, Texas, where you live, is in the southeast of Texas, right? More or less. Uh, Victoria address is my previous address two years ago. Now I moved to Austin. Oh, okay. That's right. You did tell me that. And Austin is sort of in the center of the state, but it's not anywhere. It's in the hill country. It's not in any place like this. That's... If anything, that's far west Texas, right? That's actually, that's always a studio work because when I travel, I took a ton of pictures. And then when the plein air season is closed, like too cold to paint, that's where I paint studio work. So that's the, the outcome. Oh, okay. Uh, where, where is the location though? I'm just curious. That one uh, in Utah. But the, the horses is everything is composed. It's a multi, it's a product of multi photograph arranged in scale with some drama. So even the color is not the same. I like, you know, a studio works. I yeah. have a freedom to uh, play what's inside my mind and heart. <laughs> exactly. And that freedom of uh, your selection of uh, objects uh, or figures to include and the color and all of that. I actually gets at what was most curious to me when I saw your website, uh, the works that you submitted for our PowerPoint, these Western images, I know that's a small sample of all the work you've produced, but it seems to be a very small percentage. You, you're, most of your work, and this is what I'm really getting at, the, especially the middle ground and the foreground of this image is much sharper, it seems to me, and clearer, less atmospheric than the bulk of your work that I've been able to see uh, through the computer. Is, is that something that is connected to the subject, to the fact that you did it in the studio, or is it a change that's taking place? I see this is 2023. Is it a change that's taking place in your approach to watercolor? Oh, it's just a part of the of the design but most likely i try to mimic my speed as so to maintain the freshness either studio work or plein air mm -hmm. so i 
regardless the size, studio or plein air, I paint three hours only. Oh, okay. So that's a self-imposed limit that you're usually mm -hmm. able to meet. Mm -hmm. Wow. So with uh takes longer than that, I see a lot of information and then the freshness of the painting is not there anymore. Too many information sometimes kills the painting. Mm -hmm. yeah. It become rendering. So no soul anymore. So uh, yes. I kinda like I don't like that. <laughs> have to be <laughs> right. Well, There's something <laughs> did somebody uh, suggest that uh, some teachers suggest that uh, way of working with watercolor. Watercolor, of course, is famously associated with spontaneity and rapidity and working method and all of that. But it doesn't, of course, have to be. You, I'm sure you know that uh, in the 19th century, there was a whole fashion for, uh, they were called exhibition watercolors. And they yeah. could fool people into thinking they were actually oil paintings. They were so <laughs> precise. So yeah. first, two questions related to one, uh, one another. What interested you in plein air painting? And were there any particular teachers or artists that uh, the audience might know of that influenced you as you developed as a watercolor plein air artist? That's a loaded question. But to answer that, OK, so first, what makes uh, I do a lot of plein air works because uh, uh, I notice when I do paintings, uh, I love speed. I mean, there's something in there. Like sometimes you don't think anymore. And then the outcome is just who you are. It's not like, you know, you abide with the rules. Because yeah. for me, painting is not have the always. Like there's no always, there's no rules. It's a painting. So, yeah. so you can do what you want. So. I like the speed and then it's perfect for me when I, mean, I paint outside in plein air. I mean, three hours, I can paint in a day, I can paint three uh, paintings. And to answer the other question you have, who my mentor is technically uh, Joseph Zibokbe, if you know that guy. No, and uh, Alvaro Castane, so those, those are, are you, are you familiar with any of the American artists that painted uh, Western subjects like this? Um, I'm just absorbing because technically I train as an architect. So we do a lot of rendering, you know, the old uh -huh. rendering, like the manual thing. So now I'm in Texas. So like I have to learn to paint horses. I have to learn big trucks, <laughs> big field, the cows. It's new to me. I can yeah. paint building like crazy, but those cows, horses. At first, my horses look like, is that a goat? <laughs> well, being in Austin, uh, you know, it's not a long haul for you to get to um, the Kimball Art Museum or to the Dallas Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. want to see what American artists have done with Western subjects, cowboy subjects, mm -hmm. I strongly suggest you go there if you haven't already. You probably already. Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm planning to like, you know, Think big. So um, my ultimate goal as like painting cowboys would be the Freedom West. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is an American artist named Frederick Remington. I'm sure you've heard of him being in Texas. Uh, and he did um, many paintings of night, like the cowboys gathered around the campfire or maybe moonlight illuminating the herd while the cowboys watched over them, that kind of thing. They're not his best known works, but I noticed that you had one nocturne of cowboys mm -hmm. in your current work on your uh, web page. Mm -hmm. Very, very fine, Richie. I, I, I was very impressed because as a historian of American art, you know, I can't see an image like that and that shuffling of all these past <laughs> images going through my head. And I thought, wow, that's you know, that's a fine piece of work. And he is, to my mind, the best Western painter of uh, nocturnes. So I put that one in my list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, is it fair to say that, uh, okay, we've established this is a studio piece. You like to take uh, liberties with uh, uh, how you select color and atmosphere and, and uh, 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 compositions and all of that. Um, uh, and you value spontaneity, but something you said almost in passing a moment ago, 
are you focusing more on painting Western scenery because it, you're now there and some of the painting activities in the plein air competitions you're going to are in the West or is there something innate in the subject that's making you uh, want to depict it more often? Uh, it's just uh, now I'm enjoying plein air. It's my fourth year, but I know there's a limit here because it's it's like you have to drive, you have to go there. It's very you need you need like a passion and you need like I mean you know physically fit that I'm looking for. Yeah. I mean, and then this is like a long term plan. So I'm probably I end up doing studio work, big piece, like you know all those uh, legacy work. So because yeah. in areas uh, for me it's not like you know. You can paint like 16 by 20 at most, maybe yeah. so damn the big one, but you know. Yeah. So I'm looking for the future, maybe 30 years from now, 20 years from now. So this is like part of the yeah. long-term plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the first image uh, and talk more specifically about um, what kind of thing you might be doing when you're in Annapolis. Great, yeah. There we go. There you go. <laughs> I, I really like this. This is the kind of thing I like to take photographs of. So uh, <laughs> it has that instant appeal to me. So let's look at this one. And I'll just begin by saying that um, the works on your website that are dated earlier seem more atmospheric than this one, more watery and fluid, if you will, in the way that sort of you, you if somebody says watercolor, and you're familiar with the medium, you know, you think of that kind of atmospheric and fluid application of the brush atmospheric effects. This is more precise. Is is that a change? Because I see the same sort of thing in the um, all of the other images uh, that we're going to look at, except one. So is is that something that you're intending to do, that change? Uh, not really. Maybe I'm that time i'm a little bit inspired and i mean i always push my limit like something new like if i don't my mind and my subject doesn't inspire me why bother paint so yeah <laughs> so i always do like new things different things different approach so there's no such thing as always so I always breaking the rules thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, given that you are a young man and that you've only been doing this uh, uh, so intensely for four years, that seems like a really good approach. You know, you're, you're going to learn a lot of things by doing things and experiencing things in your painting. Um, this is a composition, though, that I think is interesting on another level. The subject and the color is appealing to some of us, people like me, just in its own right. But there's really a lot, there's a lot of things in this image. And you've harmoniously, I think, compositionally balanced them out across the surface. Now, my question is this, if you're limiting yourself to three hours of work on one, uh, one piece, do you do undergrowing first or how do you how do you sort of lay it out or is it just really that your mind can process all of this that rapidly oh uh, sometimes when i compete i study the history and then drive around and from there like a half day drive i can i can see already which way i'm gonna start which i'm gonna end for that day so i already planned my days but no this is Sometimes it's it's sometimes the rain and everything it will change. This time in Marble Falls, I think I I saw this one and then uh, there's a rain before I paint this one and then like oh that's a good one it will be yeah. a reflected yellow and then how I'm gonna maneuver that one doesn't look cheesy at all so that's why yeah. the dominant color is always yellow and then a little whisper of what red that's about it it's a almost monochrome yeah yeah well it's i i really love the way that you have the figures and the vehicles and the gas uh, pumps and uh, there are, are really so many objects 
but it doesn't seem cluttered at all. It, it, it really has a, a tight composition. Uh, and watercolorists often, I've often seen watercolorists get, I think, swept away, bad pun, in the fluidity of the uh, medium mm -hmm. and not have this kind of structure that you've uh, put into your piece here. Um, let's look at the next image, please. Where is the iconic Fox Theater? The iconic spot is recently I painted this one two months ago in Georgia, Atlanta, downtown. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, was it for a competition also? Uh, uh, Olmsted, invitational, yeah, Olmsted last April, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love old theaters, and I'm a native Georgian, although I only lived there for a few years, so I don't have a particular identity with, with Georgia. But Atlanta is a dynamic city with lots of material. Um, this is one of the older uh, structures in downtown at, uh, Atlanta. Are you drawn to that kind of thing? Yeah, as being a, an architect, so it's already given that oh, you love to paint building rich here, right? <laughs> <laughs> and my host always say, check this out, check this out. Yes, sir. If I see a plaque, like, you know, the historian plaque, like, oh, I'm going to love paint this yeah. one, that's for sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you mentioned that you uh, sort of research and think about what you're going to do on a day while you're uh, in competition. Did you do any research on Annapolis and Annapolis architecture? And did that draw you to enter this competition? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, I we live in Baltimore for seven years, five years. That span, like uh, what, 10 years ago, I've uh, been to Annapolis a uh -huh. lot. But uh, that time I'm, I'm working as an architect, so it's different mindset. So I like to go back and eat Baltimore crab again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you'll be surprised at a few of the changes that have taken place <laughs> in Atlas if you haven't been back for a while. Um, uh, we'll talk more about that uh, perhaps if I see you on Friday. Uh, <laughs> I will be walking around downtown with all of you artists. Um, but this is wonderful, the way you've uh, contrasted the parts of the composition with light and dark and sort of really built it around that, I would say, more than the architecture. It's not, am I, am I off base by saying that? It's to, to, to me, you've done a great job of these big areas of light and dark and, and negative space in the sky. And that's mo provided more structure or more strength of structure to me than the buildings. I mean, relying on the buildings is easy. Mm -hmm. You're there, you depict them. But as you say, you're trying to respond more emotionally, uh, I guess, less, less rigorous. Yeah. You're not yeah. trying to replicate what you see in front of. Uh, no, I'm done with the rendering day. So although I'm a trained, uh, like, you know, that's part of my job before I do a lot of rendering but uh try to you know not going that route so yeah kind of paint what's inside of me i mean what i want so i kind of I think of like i'm and like you call the illusionist watercolorist i don't know how it's the term <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So, well, uh, I'm, I, I'm going to be personally very interested to see what you do in uh in the historic area of annapolis the historic district because you know, it's um, it is so important. It's so distinctive. It's so uh, renowned. Uh, if you can reinterpret that, I for one would be very um, anxious to see how you did that. I'm looking forward to uh, to paint the iconic one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, next image, please. Where is Ponce? Same in downtown Georgia. Really? Uh, I mean, yeah. I did and not know that. That's how long it's been since I've been in Georgia. <laughs> that's I, they say that that's one one of the biggest brick build. That's a Sears building actually, and and then they convert into a, like a mall. It's very eclectic type of uh, building. But uh, boy, when I see that one, I'm gonna paint that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You come from Cebu City? 
Is that pronounced yes. properly? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. Cebu City is not as big as Atlanta, but it's a big city, a million or two million people, correct? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, in, in back home in the Philippines, we're like sardines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we just looked at two images uh, that you've done while painting in Atlanta. Are you attracted to the open spaces of the West or the cities and their dynamism and their large buildings? Is there any special appeal one way or another for you? Uh, um, um, not really. I mean, uh, when I compete, I divide my works into like, this will be for, uh, to be judged. You have to be in the very academic, all the composition is right to, you know, that's the judge looking for that, the backbone. And yeah. then the other one, like, this painting need to be sales. I mean, no, for, for, you know, for the patron purposes, you know. Okay. And then the other one, I try to play around. So, yeah, like whatever, uh, crazy things, crazy subjects. Yeah, it makes <laughs> more exciting. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Well, this is um, a very attractive balance of composition and uh, nice handling of architectural elements for sure. Uh, but I, I'm hearing that you're always looking for a, a new experience uh, and, and you're always expressing yourself through that new experience, uh, going to a new locale. I mean, what you're doing right now, you, you have to have new reactions, new emotions, because you're going to all these different places, right? Is that part of what is appealing about your current plan air phase? That's why I'm so wired with the plan air, because uh, first of all, I can travel and then they give me a ho. Oh, so what I... What I do is just painting. How cool yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no Getting excuse. paid to do what you love, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so I'm so inspired. And then I, you know, it, it's really different to go different places. And then your mindset, being an artist, you can see different colors, different shapes. I mean, it's, it's like a movie every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way I I carry a camera with me most of, since yeah. I've retired. Um, I've created and exhibited my photographic work, and I always clap. I suppose you always have paint with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I always. Day. It sounds like we're sort of doing the same thing. I travel uh, for the pleasure of travel, but also to see new subject matter. You know, have new visual experiences. Uh, okay, let's look at the next piece. By the way, that, that, that painting won the second prize this year in Olmsted. Oh, great, great. If you want to, if any of the others have won prizes that we did look at, or like, for instance, this one, please let us know, because I have to say I was truly impressed with the number of prizes uh, you've gathered. Uh, and I think the audience would appreciate knowing that. Um, so where is the forgotten marina? That will be in Forgotten Coast in uh, Florida. Panhandle. Oh, okay. Now I went to Florida State, so I know the Panhandle. Uh, is this anywhere near Apalachicola? That's correctly. That's very right. Yeah, in <laughs> Apalachicola. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, th this is what I meant when I was uh, saying earlier and asking you about um, your your handling of light and atmosphere. This is what your earlier work, and I say, see, this is 21. And so your career as a painter is really only about five years, right? Yeah, actually, that's wrong. Actually, this is last year. Well, oh, this year, actually, this year, I'm sorry. Oh, that's this wrong. is this year? Okay, yeah. well, now you've, you've blown my art <laughs> historical analysis completely. Oh, my bad. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have to revise the essay. Uh, <laughs> but, but this is more uh, fluid. You're, of course, depicting water, and the area of water is, makes up uh, more than half of the uh, composition. The, so am I seeing this fluidity and this watery effect, the atmospheric effect, because that's what you observe, that's the environment you were in, or is it artificial? Because you know, artificial in the positive sense that 
you wanted to emphasize that because of the location. You wanted to bring that out in your uh, work. That one too. There's so many angles in, in one painting, but in this painting, uh, since I'm in Apalachicola, the, the main app, it will be the water. Yeah. So yeah. That's where all my energy, all my skills, I'm going to put the Wadumuk like believable yeah. water. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there is it's just background. So it's yeah. almost monochromatic and then color wise, hard, soft edges, shapes. Yeah. It's only the upper right corner. Yeah. On the grid. Yeah. You there's a very uh, palpable to me uh, sense of calmness and quiet. I, and I haven't been to Apalachicola in maybe as much as 50 years. Uh, but that's one of the things that struck me because it just seems so like frozen in time and so quiet and still. So if if that's what you were feeling or trying to convey, uh, I think you really hit the nail on the head. I, 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 Thank you. I love it. Forgotten Coast because it's literally Forgotten Coast. I like, yep. it's old Americana. I mean, you know, the, I think their supermarket is the Piggly Wiggly only. I mean, that's it. It's <laughs> classic. I, I, that's, you, you're right. Uh, they haven't even advanced to the age of Publix. It's yeah. still Piggly Wiggly. Uh, yes. Well, I, when I was studying at Florida State, I met a, a man who was a lifelong uh, North Floridian. And he was, uh, we were, I don't know what, what brought us together, but he told me that when he was younger, he used to carry a sidearm, a six shooter. <laughs> and, In the movie? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was wild. And I thought, uh, you know, this man's just sort of, you know, talking through his beer or something. And I asked people and I said, no, North Florida, they said, no, North Florida was very wild. So the Forgotten Coast is still forgotten, I guess. You've been there. Yes, more that's, that's the charms, actually. So, yeah. I mean, that Panama to Port St. Joe and the Pochacola, it's yeah. beyond that. You can see high-rise buildings, new modern yes. condos. Yeah. But in between, it's like time yeah. machine. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, that's, that's good and bad. Well, I guess uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> environmentally and historically, it's good. But socially, it might not be so good. Uh, yes. But uh, an I, artist's eye, like it's it's candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tallahassee, did you uh, have you visited Tallahassee? Yeah, I passed by because normal I start my plenary years in Florida because that's a little bit it's not super cold, so March. Yeah. So that's where I start and then getting north, north, north until the do door in Wisconsin. <laughs> Florida is uh, Tallahassee rather is actually a beautiful city and a beautiful area. A lot of water, you know, a lot of marshes, a lot of forests. Mm -hmm. And in the city, um, they call themselves the city of azaleas because in the spring, at about this time, or well, April, I guess, more than this time, it, the city's got more azalea blooming than you can imagine. It's just everywhere. Anyway. The winter birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, this is, <laughs> this looks... To me, like it was taken out of a movie from the 1940s. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. I mean, it looks like a bar, but its title is The Armory. Um, where is it and, and what inspired you to create this image? Uh, that's my one of my demo during the event. Uh, oh. Actually, that's the armory in uh, Fort Combs. That's where our exhibit that time, and then like my schedule to do demo, and then I don't know what to do. It's like raining outside, so uh -huh. I just grab my easel and then sit there, and then boom, that window. It's so attractive yeah. with all the lights, and then there we go. So it's it's magical moment that time. So it's my demo. It's probably yeah. less than two hours. Uh, uh, that's yeah. <laughs> it's very cinemagraphic to me, maybe because I it, it immediately makes me think of a scene in a, a fairly early Robert Mitchum movie where he's in Havana 
and <laughs> and his lover uh, comes strutting through an open door like that, you know, and she's uh, coming from the bright light into the darkness of the interior. Uh, and you say this is in Fort Collins, Colorado? Uh, no, Fort, uh, Fort Collins, um, Fort Combs in Apachacola. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. The armory. So yeah. that's where probably they put all this. <laughs> It, There's it, a lot it, of history in that building, yeah. It has a great atmosphere, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if, if something's happening, some conversation is taking place that maybe is a little mysterious. Uh, so you, you have a real a real handle on how to manage light uh, yeah. in compositions, I think. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, I have to decide the light first before I can paint because that's dictate everything. Yeah. I call it the master puppeteer. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and in an image like this, where light is so central, literally and figuratively, is that reserved uh, paper or it looks like there's a faint outline of a building in the distance. So when you do white like this, are you leaving the paper clean? Yes. Oh, you can see all that that small what you call it, gap in between doors on the outside. That's the paper white. Uh -huh. And the top of the table, it's all paper white. And then the rest is all looks like white, but this undertone. Yes, yeah. What sort of papers do you uh, like to use? Uh, recently I use Saunders, uh, Waterford. Uh, before I use Arches because uh, it's easy to to buy. And you can buy the one everywhere. And yeah, 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 yeah. Why did you change? What made you change your selection of paper? Uh, because like I think uh, through the years I gained confidence enough because Arches have more sizing on it. Yeah. And the Saunders, it's so delicate. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, maybe maybe lesser sizing so. The color is awesome, but it's easy to do uh, overdo works because yeah. it's too soft. Yeah. So very delicate kind. So you need yeah. skills to play around. <laughs> Less is more. So do we have any more images that we haven't looked at, Laura? That is the end of the slideshow. All I can say is, Richie, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. Uh, and I truly do look forward. I hope I'll run into you on Friday. Uh, when I know I'll be wandering around the streets uh, of Annapolis, uh, enjoying seeing you and the other artists at work. Um, so good luck in the competition and good luck in uh, your all your future endeavors. And thanks for spending time with us. Thank you, sir. And it's my honor to be invited in your show. Uh, of course, the Annapolis Plein Air. Looking forward to that. Good, good. Well, uh, thank you to the listeners, uh, viewers tonight, and thank you, uh, Laura, for filling in so well uh, for Marissa. Uh, all right, Richie, nice talking to you, and you. Uh, enjoy your, the rest of your evening. Good night. Uh, See you bye. soon. Thank Take you. care, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Richie. See you next week. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.